Welcome everyone to our 2016 Equality Florida Miami Gala. I'm Stratton Politzer. I'm the Deputy Director of Equality Florida and a Miami resident. And so even though we do these events all across Florida, we do 14 of these around the state, believe it or not. But this is a very special night being here in my hometown with all of you. And we're so thrilled to be in this gorgeous new venue and want to start with a big thank you to One Hotel for really making this possible, really making this possible for all of us. So now to, to present tonight's Voice for Equality Award, I want to bring to the stage um, someone we are so thrilled is a part of Equality Florida staff. Um, our staff member in charge tonight, who you all know so well, she's been a part of building so many good organizations in this community, Cindy Brown. Well, thank you all for coming. This is, this is my first uh, Miami Gala here on staff, so I'm so glad you're all here to make me look good. So, and I have the most amazing pleasure to present the Voice for Equality Award recipient this evening. And I mean, I know you guys have seen me out and about for a long time, but tonight's honoree has been out and about for even longer than I have. I remember the first time I met him, it was a New Year's Eve, a fundraiser for Network. And if you remember Network, you're old like me, which morphed into uh, what is now the Miami-Dade Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, which is one of the largest in the country. Damien Pardo has been on the forefront of moving Miami-Dade forward for as long as I've been involved. He has been responsible for, the, the winter party was last weekend. Damien was involved with the very, very first winter party. Uh, and a few weeks ago, there was a brand new event on 8th Street called Gay Ocho or Gay 8. Damien was co-founder of that, along with Joe Cardona, who's also here. He, you know, he's one of these people who walks the walk and not just talks the talk. He rolls up his sleeves, he meets with people, he reaches into his pocket, he, he changes hearts and minds. And if there's anybody who deserve th deserves this, it's Damien. So for his decades of tireless advocacy for us, tonight we honor Damien Pardo with the 2016 Equality Florida Voice for Equality Award. Damien. Thank you for coming out. <clears throat> Thank you for supporting Equality Florida. Thank you for joining us this lovely evening and supporting a great cause. Closer? How's that? Okay, much better. So anyway, I wanted to make a few comments today and they've been around really the complacency I find in our community, meaning we've had a tremendous victory and that's marriage equality. And people seem to be okay with that and kind of like, it's time to go home, we're done. And I don't think people see the dark clouds looming on the horizon, and they're definitely there. There is a battle brewing, and that's between the LGBT community and the religious freedom movement, religious conservative organizations. I respect all religions, I happen to be Catholic, and so that's the one I'm going to use for these examples. The Catholic Church is not just a group of churches, right? They run hospitals, they run universities, they run nursing homes. They are a tax-exempt multinational conglomerate employing millions of people, and they can, and they do, legally discriminate against LGBT people. 
This is particularly scary when we consider the most vulnerable populations in our community, and that's the elderly. The elderly are served by many conservative religious organizations. And thank you, SAGE, and thank you, Jewish Community Services, for your attention to this matter. Just last month, in Havana, Cuba, which is a city that Pope Francis now calls the capital of unity, the heads of the Roman Catholic Church and Orthodox Church with Raul Castro did something that has not been done in a thousand years. I'll repeat it because that's hard to understand. A thousand years. What they did is they united in part to condemn marriage equality, gay adoption, transgender rights, and LGBT families. That's kind of important to know. Here locally, just a year ago, the Archdiocese of Miami sent a letter out to all of its employees, everyone, thousands of people. And that letter basically said that if you talked about, if you came out, if you got married, if you had anything to do with LGBT issues, even on social media, those were grounds for termination. So I'm convinced that there's a religious campaign underway to make LGBT people invisible, separate, and absolutely unequal. I hope you saw the movie Spotlight. Obviously, it's about child abuse in the church. People think that's over or it's done. No, it's not done. This continues today. There are 49 documented cases of one Jesuit school in Haiti of child abuse. J just one case, 49 cases in one place. So no, that's not done. But I love a quote from that movie. That quote was, the church thinks in centuries. Are you prepared for that? The church thinks in centuries. Wow. So I ask, are we prepared for that? And I consider two things. Fundraising. I think about us, and I, I mean us, the progressive community, LGBTQIA on steroids, all of us, right? Us versus religious conservatives. Okay, so how do we fundraise? We do this. We do events. And we do events, and we do events, and events, and events, and, and people get like, wow, you know, it's, there's traffic, it's gonna rain, I'm tired. And then you have, you know, issues about what about the charity? Is the charity good enough? And what about the food? And who's going? And what kind of expense ratio does that event have? And, and what about the philanthropic plan? I mean, we have all these things. And by the way, we kind of totally ignore the small donor. We totally ignore the foot soldier. And if you're wondering if ignoring those people works or not, well, just consider Bernie Sanders. So what do religious, religious conservatives do? They're there every Sunday. They're giving every Sunday. They're tithing. There are no questions asked. They're not asking their pastor or, their pre or anybody. They just give, give, and give. I saw a lady on a show that was being evicted. She was giving $200 a week. That's $10,400 a year. And when asked, you're being evicted, how can you give this? She's like, oh, that's God's money. That's God's money. Wow. I mean, that's... that's we, we, I wish we could do that. They raise money and they have lots and lots of large and small donors. The other area is political power. When you think about political power, you think about progressives. Well, I think in general, we kind of struggle with diversity. We put what I call boxes on boards. We put, oh, we, the has, oh, we need a Hispanic, we need an African American, we need a transgender. But we, we really don't give those boxes a lot of power. We don't really do a lot with equity and inclusion. So we, we tend to keep our resources and our power concentrated among a small group of friends. So people often feel more brokered than they do feel represented. And South Florida is often referred to as a salad because we really haven't figured it out yet. We really don't connect yet. It's hard to mobilize. Well, what about them? They mobilize like this. They are diverse, they're decentralized. By the very definition, that's how they are and at all levels of power. So you kind of get the picture. They, they're a well-oiled machine, and we, well, we can definitely do better. And of course, we can be more generous and we can do better. We can, we can do that starting today with a quality, where's Cindy? Wherever Cindy is, go to Cindy, tithe. Learn that concept today. Get on a monthly uh, amount of money and give to a quality, become part of the Florida Council. You know, uh, uh, support with time and effort. 
And one particular aspect of where we can do better is with generosity of perspective. What do I mean by that? That's the easiest thing to do because it's kind of like flipping a switch. What I mean by that is if Justice Scalia and Justice Ginsburg can actually get along and have this, these great conversations, well, why can't we? I've been in a room of people where one person said, I'm voting for Rubio, and all my friends literally got up and walked out. They're like, ooh, like, like something smelled. <laughs> you know, I've also been in a room where somebody has said, you know, I'm voting for Trump. And I said, wow, uh, well, what is it about Trump that you like? And he said, well, you know, the taxes. And we had this wonderful conversation about taxes. And we went to Google and looked it up on Google and exchanged information. And then he said, well, why won't you support Trump? And I said, well, LGBT issues. And he said, well, I didn't, I'm not as informed. Now, of course, I don't think he changed. I don't think I changed. But boy, did it feel different having that conversation with him than the one where everybody just got up and walked out. So I would suggest to you that Facebook and Google are wonderful, wonderful tools. It's an opportunity to engage, and we don't need to agree. After all, I mean, we live in Miami, right? Where any issue, especially ones involving other countries, right, like Haiti, Cuba, Israel, Honduras, Russia, Venezuela, you can pick any of them. They're all complicated, they're all complex. So why don't we reach out? Why don't we build a bridge within our own community? That's actually what we need. So maybe we should be working with some of our great allies. I think I saw Libby out there. Why don't we clone like Libby Gadinsky and Joe Cardona and all of these great people who come and, and help us in our efforts. That would be fantastic. Maybe we should be attending more of the Trump, uh, I know everybody kind of wants to throw up a little bit, but more of the Rubio and Trump rallies instead of the Hillary and the Bernie rallies. Maybe we should do more work in Liberty City, Overtown, Hialeah. I thank SAVE for the work that they do face to face in a lot of those areas in their ground campaigns. Ruth Shack, who a lot of us know and a lot of us love, used to say that Miami is this great Petri dish. It's like a little experimentation place because the rest of the country is not going to deal with our issues for decades. We have hyper diversity here, all kinds of diversity, uh, uh, diversity including economic diversity. A lot of people don't know this. You wouldn't know by where we're at, but half of our community is actually poor. So the one thing she would say is, you know what, if between us, if between all of us, if we can figure this out here, then we can definitely lead the nation. And I really, really, at the bottom of my heart, believe that. Thank you so much for this honor. It's been such a pleasure being with you here today. Thank you, Damien. That's why we call it the Voice for Equality Award. These are people who really advocate. I know many of you out there have been in county commission meetings and lobby visits and other settings where Damien has had the courage to share his voice, and that's what's changing the world. So thank you, Damien.